Hi, welcome everyone to the OPEL coordinators webinar. Uh, thank you all for joining us this evening. My name is Robin McComb, Senior Manager of Events with the Ontario Soccer Association. Uh, as you met Ryan Tusky already, court, uh, Events Coordinator with the Ontario Soccer Association. And also here with us is Jan Lang. Uh, he's a field manager uh, with the OPDL. And uh, some of you may already have met and worked with Jan and uh, others I'm sure will work with him over the course of the summer. Also online, you heard an introduction already from Gabriel Assis. He is the senior coordinator for the OPDL. He just started this position this week, but I know that a number of you will probably be dealing with him quite a bit over the summer. Uh, Gabe will probably chirp in at some point throughout the presentation if he has anything to add. So we will connect him in when he wants to make a comment. Uh, many of you are first time OPDL coordinators on this webinar, but I would like to point out that there are a number of very experienced OPDL coordinators. Uh, Kirby and Brian, Emily and Nicole, uh, I think I got them all. They've all participated as a, an OPDL coordinator last year um, at the central venues. So they will also be doing central venues again this year, uh, even though a lot of this webinar will be focused on the host club hosting venues i'm sure that they will have some input as well that can they can share with you on things to do and and how to deal with certain situations so nicole emily kirby and brian if you have anything to add please just uh, click on the raise your hand icon and we will connect you in and you can share your information with the group okay with, with that said we will get started I'm uh, just going to start by going through the position and the role of the OPDL coordinator. So the OPDL coordinator is directly responsible for game day management of the host venue. So each of you uh, is, is from a host club and will be hosting uh, game days at your club venue and you will be responsible for the game day management at that venue. Essentially, the responsibility is yours, but we are hoping that the host clubs will also provide you with as much support as possible, lending you with extra hands to help set up and take down at the end of the day. Some of your responsibilities include the setup of, well, it says two fields for, of, for game play. So those that are working in central venues will have two fields, and there are a few host clubs that will have two fields operating at the same time throughout the season. However, for the most part, a lot of the host venues will just be operating one field uh, for the game day. But the setup of that field includes setting up of goals, corner flags, and field markings, setting up of the administration gazebo. And, and we're going to go into a little bit more detail on the setup a little bit later on. This is just an overview of your responsibilities. Setting up and testing of a PA system, if applicable, not all sites will have a PA system, but if, if your club happens to have one, it would uh, be, that would be involved in your duties. Uh, putting up the banners and any flags that are uh, required. Directional signage as needed, depending on the venue and how it's set up. Preparing dressing rooms or change rooms for teams and game officials. Preparing water uh, access and concessions if your club is doing any concession stands. Liaising with the teams upon their arrival. Direct uh, customer service support to the teams and their groups during the OPDL game. And you're a point of contact for the match referees upon arrival and during their visit. There is a match official liaison that will be on site for all of your venues. However, uh, in the event that they are not there or uh, may be busy with something else, you would be a point of contact for match referees or match officials. And also providing assistance to on-site medical staff during their visit. Uh, game time administration will include assisting with the substitution process, game sheets and other paperwork. Again, we'll go into detail a little bit further on in the webinar, but this is just an overview. And then again, at the end, closing up uh, the venue, the storage of field equipment, uh, making sure the venue is clean and tidy before leaving, turning off lights if there are lights that are used later on in the season, 
and uh, any other venue requirements. And then there's there are some closeout reports that have to be completed at the end of the day. So moving along uh, to the OPL equipment requirements. I'm gonna give you an overview of the equipment requirements and then we'll start going through the uh, pre-game day setup, uh, the game day setup during the game and then and then after the game. So a lot of you may or may not be aware, depending on how much information your club has shared with you, uh, the OPDL will, has provided each club with one gazebo or tent, a 10 by 10 tent, four weights for that 10 by 10 tent, four game balls, one OPDL banner, 24 discs for marking the technical area, four pylons for marking retreat lines, a backpack with administrative supplies, including a binder with a bunch of paperwork, uh, which includes manuals, extra game sheets, extra substitution forms, a ball pump, cable ties for putting up the banner, stapler, pens, uh, anything you might need, hopefully everything you might need uh, will be within that backpack. And we'll be providing an OPDL staff shirt for the for you. So that's the equipment that the OSA has provided to the clubs for the OPDL games. The host organization is required to provide two additional gazebos, a table and chairs for the administrative table, nets for the goals, corner flags, and any other equipment that might be needed at the venue. So again, I'm not sure about the communication between you as an OPDL coordinator and your club, but hopefully they have communicated a lot of this information to you and uh, you are aware of where it is being stored and how it will be getting to the field. If you're not, that's something that you should follow up with your club on. Uh, find out where the equipment currently is being stored, how it's going to get to the field of play and where it needs to be stored at the end of the day or at the end of the weekend. Okay, uh, pre-game day. So before the game day, each club is going to, or each OPDL quarter and host club will receive a master management report, which details the games that take place on their home game date. So this is a, a form which will include details about each game that will be played at your site. It will be specific to your site. Uh, it will show you the, the two teams that are playing, the team colors that the teams will be wearing that day, the referees for each match, uh, the medical officer that will be on site during the weekend or the day, and uh, the field manager that will be working uh, that weekend. And there's probably some other details in there as well, but that that information sheet should be with you at all times throughout uh, the day when you're hosting. And you should keep it within the binder that is in the backpack. You can also make copies if you wanted to uh, have uh, available at different locations if you need to. Uh, if you've got more than one field going on, you will probably need to have two copies of the master management report. And that will be arriving uh, emailed to you probably by the Thursday or Friday before your weekend. It is unlikely that you'll get it much earlier than that, but you will have it by the Thursday or Friday before the weekend. Okay, now we're going to talk about game day setup. Um, to start with, what should you wear? So as we mentioned, we will be providing you with an OPDL polo shirt. That should be worn at all times during the event. Please dress appropriately in a presentable attire that is suitable for the weather conditions of the day. So if it's a hot July day, then you can wear shorts if you like, and the OPDL polo shirt if it's November and it's chilly out, we don't expect you to wear the, t the polo shirt. Uh, you can wear something like a fleece or something underneath 
or over top of the, the polo shirt. Uh, wear appropriate footwear, no sandals or flip flops are permitted. Please make sure that you bring sunscreen and a hat. If it's a hot sunny day, then you will need to make sure you're protected from the sun. It is a long day and you are outside for the entire day. So please take that into consideration. As I mentioned, if it's cold, uh, bring a sweater. If you're expecting rain, please bring a rain jacket. You don't want to be outside all day without any rain protection. And the other thing we wanted to stress was not to wear any clothing that has a club logo on it. You are representing the OPDL when you're working, so you should not be wearing anything that has your club logo on it. You're an OPDL staff member on that day. When should you arrive? Uh, you should arrive at least two hours before your first game scheduled kickoff time. So if it kicks off at 9.30 a.m., we are asking you to arrive at 7.30 a.m. This is so that you can have the venue set up before your first teams arrive, and the teams will be arriving one hour before kickoff. Some of them may even arrive earlier than that, so you should be prepared for that. But the idea is to make sure that your venue is set up and ready to go for when the teams arrive. And then when those teams do arrive, You'll be doing other duties such as greeting the teams and uh, giving them direction. So you won't be able to set up at the same time. So please make sure that you're, you're set up before the teams arrive. We suggest two hours. Um, a number of you will be hosting more than one event day throughout the summer. If you find that you can do it in a half an hour, then you can adjust your time. But to start with, for the first couple of weekends, we're asking you to arrive two hours beforehand. So just to give you an idea of how long your game day will be, uh, for a typical day that starts at 9.30 a.m., you would arrive two hours beforehand at 6.30 a.m., and you should be done and completed and cleaned up and out of there by 6.30 p.m. at night. Hopefully sooner if you if the games are on schedule and uh, you're, you have assistance and help to clean up at the end of the day, you'll get out of bed there a little bit earlier, but just as a general guideline, that's something you can base it on. So as the OPDL coordinator, you are responsible for the setup of the event. And as I said, uh, hopefully your host clubs will provide you with assistance, at least for, for setting up uh, and closing down at the end of the day. Once everything is set up and running, you're probably okay on your own. It's the setup that's going to be the most time consuming. Uh, uh, please make sure that that when you arrive at the venue, you are aware of the designated parking that is available. Uh, every venue is a little bit different and parking is a little bit different wherever we go. So make sure that you know where the designated parking is and that you that there is signage provided so that you can direct the teams to where that, that parking is. There's an OPDL banner that should be hung in a prominent place and that would be hung up uh, on a fence or somewhere that is seen by all spectators and teams uh, during the day. There should be a minimum of three gazebos set up. There should be an area set up for the medical support. Uh, if you've got an extra gazebo or a tent that you can provide for medical, that's uh, a nice idea as well. Otherwise, it gets a little crowded underneath the administrative tent at Center Field. The Gatorade hydration station is set up, and we'll go through the specifics of the Gatorade hydration station later. Make sure that the washrooms and change rooms are open and check to make sure they are clean and ready for use. And uh, in some cases, you will be required to set aside a designated space for match video recording. Uh, so you have to cordon off an area so that our technical staff can do some video recording of the games. For the under 13 games, there, a retreat line is marked using two pylons on either side of the field. Uh, we can provide you with the specific details of where that goes in, uh, in the information we'll send to you later. 
ensure that the goals have nets on them and are secured. Make sure that there are no holes in those nets. So you may need to use some of the cable ties to repair any holes if you come across any. Make sure that corner flags are placed on the field. Uh, the team benches should be set up on either side of the administration gazebo. You will need to mark the team's technical areas with the cones that we provide, uh, unless they're already marked on your field. But if not, then use the cones to mark the technical area. And make sure that the, uh, the technical area is five yards by 10 yards. And then make sure that the bleacher seating spectator area is uh, set up and that it's free of litter and debris. This is a photo from this past weekend in Hamilton, uh, OPDL games that took place there. Just as a sample so that you can see how the venue is set up. You've got the OSA tent as the administration table in the middle. You've got two tents over the benches for each of the teams. As you can see, the OPDL banner is prominently displayed. There is a table underneath the tent for administration. And then you can see just off behind player number two uh, is the Gatorade station. Uh, there's a water jug set up there uh, for the teams um, to use. Sorry, we just have two questions that have come up from Burlington. Does, de does designated parking mean a special section for OPDL teams only? No, it doesn't. It just means that there has to be parking for the team somewhere. It doesn't have to be designated specifically for OPDL teams. And the second question, how far should the technical area be from the half line? Uh, it depends on how the uh, the benches are set up. If they are secured in the ground and they can't be moved, then the technical area would be around the bench. Uh, you want it to be a sufficient distance away from the administration table, but not too far away so that the uh, the teams have access to the administration table for substitutions. Uh, there isn't a set. It, the, there is no set. Uh, space away from the center or from the halfway line for these benches. Um, but just to also on the technical area, it should be one meter from the touch line and one meter off the either end of the team bench area. Okay, moving on. Uh, just a, uh, another photo. This is a, this is the Gatorade station, which actually is not a Gatorade station. It's really just a hydration station. This jug is full of water, not Gatorade. Uh, we didn't have the Gatorade product at the central venues. But as you can see, it's accessible for teams to fill up uh, during their game. Okay, hosting guidelines, game day operations. So the OPDL coordinator is, oh, sorry, one more question. Okay, there's a question about shirts and when you will get them. I will touch on that at the end of the webinar. Uh, so we'll talk about that a little bit later on, Nicole. Okay, game day operations. I'm gonna turn it over to Jan, who is now going to go through the game day operations uh, with you. Hey everyone, we'll just go through a bit of what is, is pretty key for your role with the OPDL this summer. Um, so as Robin has already mentioned, um, execution of operations is up to you at, uh, at your venue and at central venues as well. Um, and of course, you are the first point of contact for these teams who are you're, you're providing a service to. So it, it definitely is important that we're on point with, with everything here and also following protocol. 
Um, so you see here on the on the last point that teams must arrive one hour before. We find often they'll arrive even earlier. So just be ready to to greet them and point them in the right direction to the facilities, um, such as the changing rooms or or washrooms, which not all of them may have, but um, most should have. Um, so as I said there, teams will arrive and you'll point them in the right direction. Um, the teams from last year, so the under 14s, will already have some experience, but they might not have been at your club before. So it's important to keep in mind that they will have questions. And the second point there with the match officials and the medical support, they'll check in with you. And um, it's, are we giving a uh, threat sign in? So the match officials will have a, there will be a match official sign in report that they'll uh, they'll indicate the time that they arrive, which should be at least 45 minutes before the game. But it's all in the binder that's in your backpack. Um, so have that, have them sign in with you. As you see here, 30 minutes before the game is generally when the teams are allotted their warm up, um, which would be 20 minutes and then stops 10 minutes before game time. Uh, we found that teams choose to use it or not, but it, you definitely cannot give them 20 minutes based on when they enter the field. Some teams just choose to go with less time. They're not allotted more for showing up late. Um, and they should be handing you their team sheets 30 minutes before. They'll try not to. So it's important to get on them and, and collect that as early as possible. Firstly, for the referees to, to get a jump on signing because there is four copies for each team. And uh, second, for any any um, protests or if you have some suspensions to, to monitor that you have to sign off on and make sure the player is not playing. Um, with match delays, we are permitted to delay by one hour before we have to cancel the game. Uh, hopefully that doesn't happen at all, but of course the, the opportunity is there. So uh, if there is a delay, they are entitled to the same warm-up time as if the game had been on time, and everything will just move back subsequently. Um, you know, the, the game's after, and it, and it is good good protocol to give the teams after a heads up and say, you know, we're running a bit behind. Please show up at the same time, but just so you're aware and you're not waiting around for a long time. During the game time, and this one is... Um, Pretty important with substitutions. Um, the substitution rules have changed a bit for this year. It's all explained in your game day operations manual, which is in your binder. Um, but just for a quick run through, each team will have three substitutions during gameplay, which is 30 minutes, 30 minutes, and 30 minutes, with five minute breaks in between. During those breaks, they are on they are able to make unlimited substitutions, which they don't have to note on the substitution form. But any of the substitutions during gameplay do have to go on the substitution form, which the teams should have. And if they don't, there will be spare copies in your binder. Uh, again, hopefully teams don't have to ask you for that all too often, but there will likely be scenarios where someone has forgotten or their printer doesn't work. Um, and with this process, as you are at the the administration tent, if there is a match official liaison, which sometimes uh, will be able to sign these things off, but if not, you should be prepared to just initial underneath the substitution. So just an, as an example, if uh, number nine is leaving the game, number 10 is entering the game, the teams making the substitution will indicate that on the form, they'll bring it to you, You'll sign off on the substitution, the substitution will be made, and then the form will go back to the team's bench. And it's important that we keep this consistent uh, across all venues and all game days so that teams get used to following this process. Um, that's, that's during the game. I mean, obviously also watching out for any balls going out over fences or um, the retreat line cones falling over. Uh, from a ball hitting it or anything of the sort, so keep an eye on that. Um, so just general game management, but with regards to coaches and uh, and players, it really is the referee who is managing that aspect. Um, 
So you are hopefully not getting in a situation where you're confronting an irate coach about a decision. That's that's really not your place. That's going to be the, the, the match official who who talks to that that coach. Now we move to after the game, and at this point, it's important that you get the referees to sign everything. The, there will be eight copies of game sheets and two sub forms, one from each team. The referees will need to sign all of that, and uh, one copy of each team's game sheet will go to each team. So uh, the home team will get one of their own team and one of the opposing team, as will the away team. One copy will be kept for the official if in case they need it, and uh, the last copy will be kept for us, which needs to include the sub forms. Um, so you will have uh, an, a binder there, sorry, an OPDL kit, which will have a stapler. So best protocol is to put that all together. And it's important that the team officials from the team actually do sign uh, the game sheets, absolutely. Um, oftentimes, if they're, if they're not prepared or sometimes they don't have managers and these coaches aren't necessarily the greatest managers, they just won't sign things. So you need to be vigilant and make sure that you um, are chasing these signatures down. It's just another reason to collect the, the forms early. Um, and upon the conclusion of the game, you will log into the uh, game management system, which Ryan will explain just in a bit later, to report the score. Um, so with our copy, you're keeping one of each teams as well as one subform from each team, and that will go back to the OSA um, following Monday after the weekend. And so just again, the ref will keep one of each team in case they need to do any uh, dismissal forms or, sub or uh, caution forms or special incidents reports. They need that information, such as the player uh, registration number and, uh, and the player's name. So they may not need it. And oftentimes, they probably will forget to take it. But it's definitely important to offer um, in case they need the, the reference. And I think Ryan's going to talk to you now about the OPDL score reporting system. OK, guys, I'm just going to uh, get out of this slideshow and demonstrate um, what you do after the game when it's time to log into the OPDL league management system. And, uh, and record the scores and, and details of the game. So I'm going to get out of the slideshow and pull up the internet. So our website, I'll type it in even though we're already here. It's www.theopdl.com. So here we go. Um, at the very top, there's a login section. So I'm going to log in as, as Jan. Um, you will each have your own email and password that will be provided to you. Um, I've already done this. It's remembering Jan's email. And I will log in. So here I am logged in. Um, what you're going to want to do, uh, these, these blue tabs you see across the top, home, about, my team, games, uh, you're going to want to go to the games tab. And you'll notice on the left side of the screen there are some, some options here, schedules, results. Um, at the very bottom, you see another blue tab called convener um, as the, the field convener. Uh, this is the section you want, and just below it there is something called game report. So you're going to click on game report. And on this page here, there's going to be a list of all of the OPDL games from that weekend. Uh, they will not be exclusive to just uh, your games at your site. Um, so please make sure to only, um, only report for the games that you are responsible for. 
another thing to note too, um, if you log in to this site and get to the game report section, the, these games will not be listed until the games have kicked off. Um, for the obvious reason that we don't want you with the ability to uh, record scores and, and discipline before the game is completed. So you won't be able to log in here and, and see these games until the games have actually kicked off. Um, but again, all the games for that weekend will be listed there. So please just pay attention to the ones that are relevant to you. So there's there's one left over here from, from May 9th, uh, Whitby versus Vaughn, boys under 13. So what you're going to do, uh, first, uh, you need to you need to do the score and, and any discipline for each team individually. So we're going to start with Whitby. So you see when you hover your mouse over Whitby, um, there's a link there. So click on Whitby. And the first thing it's going to ask you is what was the outcome of the game? And there's a little drop down menu here. Uh, game was completed, not completed, or the game was not even started. 99% uh, of the time, uh, the game was completed. So we're going to click that. And then it pulls you to this section where you need to fill in the score. Um, so let's say, for argument's sake, the score was 3-3. Three, three. So you input it for both Whitby, uh, the score for Whitby and for Vaughn. The card section is only for Whitby since we're in the Whitby section. So, so let's say Whitby had two yellow cards. We'll put two there. Uh, this bottom section here where it has lone player one, two, and three. Um, just ignore this section. This is uh, not applicable uh, to the OPDL. Um, the, your, your rostered players are, are already in the system, as are your sub-rostered players. So uh, you don't need to pay attention to this section, and we'll, we'll look at getting this thing removed. Um, so once you've got the score, three, three, two yellow cards, four Whitby, we're going to click Next. And now the system's going to ask for uh, the players um, who scored and who received cautions. So I guess Aaron Hansen's the top of the list. That's why he's default there. But let's pick three different guys who scored goals. Uh, make sure to keep these in order, too. Uh, the first goal that was scored um, based on time is Jaden. Second was Elijah. Third, Roberto. Um, same thing for cards. Uh, I've been corrected <laughs> by Robin and Jan. Uh, don't worry about the order of the score. Um, on the, the game sheet, likely won't uh, won't have the minute of the goal scored listed. So uh, just list the goal scores. Doesn't need to be in order. Um, same thing for the cautions. So let's not blame Aaron Hansen for everything. Uh, and we'll give two yellow cards to two players. Um, and in the red card section, we didn't enter any red cards on the previous screen, so there's nothing there. So we click next, and this is just a confirmation page um, to confirm these are the three scorers, these are the three or the two players with yellow cards. Um, I'm not going to click submit because this is an actual game, and I want to make sure this information is correct. So I'm, I'm not going to click submit. But um, when you have completed this information for your game, you should click submit, and then you're going to need to go back to that games tab and finish games and then the convener on the left here and then game report. You're going to need to do the same process for Vaughn. Um, now, since I didn't click submit, there's still a, a hyperlink here for Whitby. Um, if I had clicked submit, this would no longer be hyperlinked. It would just show that I need to do Vaughn still. So I would click on to Vaughn, and it's going to ask you to confirm uh, that the score was in fact 3-3 three, three. and then it is going to ask you um, for the same information it asked you on the Whitby side uh, who were the goal scorers um, were there any cautions and and who those players are um, you'll then again click submit and then you're finished for that game and you'll move on to your next game um, are there any questions regarding that before we before we move on about the the online stuff you do have a question. Uh, looks like Helen has a question. Helen, I know you were having mic issues earlier. Um, I've just unmuted you. Do you want to try again? Okay, uh, we can't hear you, Helen. I know you uh, you typed a question earlier, so Robin's just going to read that read that out.
Oh, Helen, sorry. I, I thought you had written one in. Um, can you, if you do have a question, can you write it on the uh, the questions portion of the webinar, and then we can read that out and answer as best we can. Okay. Uh, there's a question from Rod from Burlington. Uh, his question is that this works on most cell phones, and yes, that is correct. It will work on on any smartphone. You can use any smartphone to uh, to put this information in. There is an app for the OPDL website, but you can't do the game entering on the app. You have to go to the website to do the game score reporting. Okay. Um, Gabe, did you... Uh, I just wanted us to submit the results so we could put them in the test and we clear it after. But... Okay, anybody else before we... Uh, before we move along. Okay, not seeing any. So if you guys do have questions, especially once you go through this for the first time um, in a couple weeks from now, uh, if you do have any issues, um, phone call, email, um, and we can we can walk you through it. Um, before we keep going, guys, there's one more question. Robin's going to read it out. Uh, Nicole is asking if they have to do each one after each game or if they can do all four at the end of the day. We'd like the OPDL coordinator to do it after each game. Uh, it gets results up quicker as people are all over the province might be looking for results. So we would like it to be done after each game. And that includes the under 13s and the under 14s. So although we aren't keeping scores and standings for the under 13s, we are still asking you to fill in the information uh, the game details in this in the game report for those games. <clears throat> it will not be posted publicly, so nobody will be able to see the information you have entered. But it is used for our technical staff in doing their uh, player evaluations. But so you may need to remind the referee actually to fill that game sheet in properly. It, he should be recording the actual score and the goal scores on the team sheet. Some of them think that because they're not keeping scores and standings that they shouldn't record a score on the game sheet, but they do need to put that in. So just have an eye to make sure that they complete that information. Uh, there was another question about not having a smartphone to submit these reports. That actually is a requirement of the OPDL coordinator uh, position is to have a smartphone. So if you are an OPDL coordinator and you do not have a smartphone, um, hopefully you will have somebody else on site that does have one because it is imperative that these results are reported immediately following the game. Okay. If there are, oh, there's another question. Oh, Gabe has a comment. Gabe, give me one second. I'll just unmute you. Um, go ahead. Make sure your mic is unmuted as well. Please. So just to yeah. Oh, sorry, can you start again? We just, just to, uh, to just to add to Robin's comment on the uh, on the game sheet. Uh, even though the OPDL coordinator is uh, inputting the score for the U13, as Robin mentioned, uh, let's not uh, publicize the scores uh, in any any shape or form or what I mean by that, if coaches that were not on the game are asking for the scores or are asking to see the game sheet, they're not allowed to. And please report them back to us if they insist or if they uh, um, they ask for the game sheet. Okay, thanks, Gabe. And uh, I think that goes for, for Twitter as well. We put something out, uh, a communication not to be publicizing scores for the U13s uh, in any form, including social media. Just one more comment on the social media um, for the under 14 results. Uh, we do have our communications department here at the OSA that will be tweeting out game results, which is another reason it's imperative that we get these results posted immediately following the game, because they will be checking uh, for these results and tweeting that information out and getting it out on social media. Okay. Is there anybody else before we move on? Okay. Um, 
not seeing any, so we'll, we'll move on. I'm going to pass it back to Robin. She's going to go over the uh, game day close down um, after the games are completed. Not sure what just happened to the slideshow. <laughs> Don't know what you guys are seeing, but oh, there we go. Okay, game day closed down. Uh, so the game, the day is finally done. Uh, on the completion of the final game, it's time to clean everything up. Uh, so that means taking down the OPDL signage and the banner, uh, packing up the PA system. Uh, putting away all the tents, uh, taking down the tables and chairs and anything else that you've used, uh, cleaning up the venue and uh, putting away any litter or uh, any items that are left over. Sometimes uh, some teams might leave something behind. Uh, we ask that you just hold on to that item and hopefully we can somehow get it back to the team at some point uh, over the course of the season. Mm -hmm. But uh, if, if, we're, if you can just hold on to it and let us know what, that you have found something and we'll pass that on information on to the team. Again, check uh, the venue to make sure that uh, it's all clean. And then there should be a specific storage area for all the OPDL equipment. As I said at the beginning, find out from your club where that uh, equipment is going to be stored. And hopefully it'll be at the venue because that'll be the easiest for you and uh, for, for you reuse at your next home games. So at the uh, end of the day, there is an, it's called an OPDL report form, I believe. And that is a form for you to fill out, which uh, provides an area for you to give uh, feedback on the games throughout the day, uh, if there are any issues that came up that you sh feel should be recorded and uh, the OSA notified, uh, those will be the, there's a place on that form for you to put that in. This form is included in the binder, which is in the backpack. This form is also your timesheet, so you will need to fill the form in and have it signed at the end of the day, uh, first by your uh, OPDL coordinator, sorry, by your uh, club. Uh, representative, they are aware that they should have somebody there at the end of the day to sign off on that form for you. But then the other thing you'll need to do is contact the field manager that's on duty for your conference that day. And at that time, you'll report to them that you've closed the venue down, uh, identify any issues that need to be addressed at that time, and note your time of departure so that can be validated on your report. And then on the Monday, we're asking that all of the paperwork be sent to the OSA. So hopefully you'll have the ability to scan that information and email it to the OSA. Uh, we will provide you with the uh, email address for you to send that information to. Okay, uh, just going to touch on a few miscellaneous items that we haven't really addressed in this presentation so far. Uh, one is the Gatorade hydration station. So th there should be a table set up in an area that's accessible to all teams, hopefully close to the team benches. I know that there are some venues that may not allow Gatorade product on the actual field of play. So hopefully you can find a suitable area that is close to the team benches, but not uh, on the field of play that is suitable and acceptable to the venue. We have provided each club with uh, Gatorade coolers. These are the big round jugs that uh, should be used. Uh, we've also provided the clubs with Gatorade powder product. So this powder gets dumped into the Gatorade cooler and then it gets filled with water and mixed up and there you go, Gatorade. <laughs> <laughs> this this uh, cooler should go out on the table 
And we've also provided each club with uh, a number of cups. So the cups can be put out on the table as well and teams can help themselves throughout the day to the Gatorade. Just so you know, you should also provide a jug of water, uh, not just the Gatorade, but also water only, uh, especially on hot days. The teams will need water as well as the Gatorade product. Uh, and just a reminder that you should probably check on that cooler uh, throughout the day. Don't assume that once you fill that up in the morning, you don't have to think about it again. Double check on it to make sure that it's full. And if you need to replenish it throughout the day, you, you should do that. And at the end, <laughs> two, two tips I've just received. Uh, one is to wash out the cooler at the beginning of the day before you use it to give it a little rinse. And at the end of the day, make sure you do a thorough clean out of it, because if you don't get it cleaned out properly, you'll have difficulty for your next home game. Uh, it gets a little sticky and it gets a little mildewy if it's not cleaned properly. properly. OK, game balls. Each club has been given four game balls to be used for the entire season. Um, Make sure you don't leave these balls unattended as they will disappear. It, there's no question that if there's just balls sitting out that somehow they magically disappear. Don't keep all four game balls out on any given day. Keep uh, two out for the field. If you've got two fields going, you'll need four of them, obviously. But if you've only got one, uh, try to just put out two, maybe three game balls, depending on uh, what's around your field. If, it, if the ball tends to travel outside the field of play quite far, you'll probably need more balls. But uh, you need to keep the track of these balls because they are for the entire season. We do not have replacement balls for you and you are responsible for keeping track of these balls. Uh, just a side note, we did have some difficulties this past weekend with the game balls that we did provide. So we have new game balls, which we will be exchanging with each club uh, so they get the new game balls in exchange for their old game balls so we're we'll working with the clubs to uh, exchange those game balls before next week when the games start the opdl shirts we arrived in the office on friday so now we need to make arrangements to get the shirts to each opdl coordinator uh, since we are hoping to make an exchange of game balls with um, most of the clubs uh, perhaps that is an opportunity for us then to give them your shirt and then you can get the shirt from from the club. We do have your shirt sizes. Uh, we have male and female sizes. So we will be uh, using that chart of sizes to uh, assign the shirts and we will give those to the clubs as we get those balls exchanged. If you would like to make your own arrangements to pick the shirt up here on your own, you're welcome to do that. Just send myself or Ryan or Gabriel an email. And we'll make sure that we uh, get those sh the shirt uh, arranged a uh, setup for you to pick up the shirt. The field manager. So we've talked a little bit about the field manager, but haven't really gone into a lot of detail on what they'll be doing on your home weekend. Uh, for those of you that do the central venues, you are well aware of the role of the field manager, uh, but the role of field manager will be a little bit different in the home and away games at each home venue. So each conference will have a field manager appointed for the weekend. Uh, the field manager is the highest point of OPDL authority designated to the conference games on game days. So if there are any issues or questions that you are not sure how to answer, your field manager will be the person you should contact for the answer. Uh, they are also the point of contact for OPDL match official liaisons if there are any match official issues that arise. So you will have a match official liaison at your site. Uh, if there is any issues that they don't know how to handle, they will then also contact the field manager for uh, assistance. The OPDL field managers will be visiting each venue uh, within the conference to assist if needed. Uh, they will be there to provide guidance 
they will be there to check on your venue to make sure that you have set it up according to the OPDL guidelines, making sure that the banner is put up properly, that the tents are assembled, the Gatorade hydration station is set up, uh, and just generally that the venue is uh, appropriately set up for this caliber of league game. The field manager is also available to fill in for an OPDL coordinator if needed. Uh, so if on game days if something happens, uh, if you're an OPDL coordinator and uh, you become sick for some reason and you can't continue on that day, you can contact the field manager and they will come to your venue and fill in for you. Uh, as I said, they'll provide guidance to you. If you have any questions whatsoever, uh, you can contact the field manager at any time throughout the day and they will uh, assist you in any way they can. If there is a serious issue that does come up on site, uh, the field manager will do his, his or her best to get to your site uh, to deal, address those issues that might arise. Okay, uh, just before we move on, any, any questions about the role of the field manager? Okay. Uh, the new person form. Uh, you are essentially becoming a staff member of the OSA as an OPDL coordinator. As a result, we need to have each of you complete a new person form, which uh, requires information about you, your... Um, contact information, your address, uh, social insurance, and your banking information. So uh, we will be sending the new person form to each of you to be completed and returned to the OSA. Uh, each OPDL coordinators will be paid $13 an hour and uh, the money will be transferred to your bank account after uh, each round that you've worked. So once you have submitted your uh, OPDL coordinator report with the times you worked, it'll come into the office, it will be processed. Uh, and then uh, then the, the money will be eventually transferred to your bank account uh, as payment. Uh, the news person form uh, will either require your banking information uh, included on the form or uh, another option is to also include a blank check with that news person form. A void check, sorry, not a blank, not a blank check. <laughs> a void check. Uh, one other thing we like to do is, is put a schedule together of the dates that OPDL coordinators will be working throughout the summer. I know that some of the clubs have assigned more than one OPDL coordinator. What we'd like to do is, is put together a schedule. So if you could send us a list of the dates that you know that you will be working at your club, uh, then we will put a master schedule together and then we can distribute that to everybody so we all know who's working on what weekends. And there's no concluding. <laughs> there's, there's no slide to conclude this workshop. So... Um, I, I guess at this point, I'd like to open it up to, uh, to any questions that you might have, anything that we may have uh, not covered that you have concerns about or questions about. Uh, we, we do have a question uh, from Marco. Go ahead, Marco. Yes, hi. Um, so you want the reports to be filled out after each game, correct? The, uh, the uh, sorry, which report? The after the game report, all the scores, the yellows. The online report, yes, after each game, correct. So what happens if we don't have a smartphone to do that? Uh, you'll have to make arrangements with somebody within the club then to have a, a smartphone on site. It is a requirement that, that these games are posted following each game. Okay, thank you. Okay. i uh, just going to let uh, Gabe uh, unmute his microphone in case he would like to make any comments at this time. Go ahead, Gabe. Putting you on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> yes, thanks for the notice, Robin. 
Uh, no, what I just uh, was a great presentation, and I think highlights uh, what we expect from the coordinators. Uh, it's important for you as a coordinator to understand there's a whole network of support as well. Uh, so communicate with the field, field managers if you're not sure about any uh, rules or any interpretation of the operational manual. Uh, get familiar with the operational manual and the game day manual so you're able to answer uh, the questions on the field. And you also have the support on site for most of the games of uh, match official liaison. Uh, anything related uh, with match officials, um, they will be your go-to person. Uh, make sure that uh, uh, I'm working with you and providing uh, the support you need. Okay, uh, you cut out a little bit at the end, Gabe. I said, but uh, did you? Were you finished? Uh, yes. Okay, that's Gabe. Thanks, Gabe. That's a good point. Uh, the the manuals are in the binder that you have. There's the game day guidelines and the operations manual. It is a good idea if you read those manuals before your first game because they do contain a lot of information that will come up throughout the day. Uh, there's also the uh, OPDL coordinator. Uh, document that was sent to you along with the information about this webinar. I, a lot of it highlights the information we discussed, but it's a good idea to read through that so you have that information as well. Uh, there's uh, a question from uh, Rod from, from Burlington regarding um, club logos. Uh, the question was, um, over the team bench uh, of the home team, are they allowed to have a club logo on that tent and a generic tent for the away team? Also wondering if they can have a separate canopy um, away from the field with the club logo on it. Um, yes, a rod to both of those. You can you can do that absolutely if you want to have over your home team bench. If you want to have the club logo on that tent, that's fine. As well as in a I guess maybe a headquarters location off the field um, as well. Um, and then Rod, your second question was about staff attire. Um, rod had said that. There will be a, a club, um, I guess a club staff person there to assist the OPDL coordinator. And you're wondering if the uh, if that staff person, that club staff person, needs to have OPDL, an OPDL shirt as well, or if they are allowed to wear club attire. Uh, yes, okay, so I'm just, Robin's nodding. Uh, the club attire would be okay. Um, the, the OPDL shirt would be required for the OPDL coordinator. Uh, but if you have some club people there um, to assist you, the the club, um, the club attire is fine. Uh, Jan has just also uh, mentioned that there are sponsorship guidelines, which you'll find in the binder, in the one of the manuals. I'm not sure which one offhand, but you might want to review that too regarding uh, sponsorship guidelines. Um, also, there was one more question, or more of a comment from from Helen, um, from Glen Shields, asking about a copy of this uh, this webinar. Um, so we have been recording it. Um, so we will, uh, I guess, post this to our website as well as the uh, the slideshow. Um, so that will be available if you need to come back and reference this. So I know you've all been furiously writing down notes, but. Um, there will be a record of this, so you can you can come back and and, and rewatch it if you need to. Um, is there any other questions before we we wrap it up and go watch Montreal lose? No, not hearing hearing none. All right, if you if you do have any questions that you think of after this, or you just would like to to talk to one of us one on one for clarification on anything, we are available. Uh, Ryan, myself, or Gabriel are in the OSA office, and you can contact us uh, anytime over the next uh, few days before your opening weekend. <laughs> I, I'm getting a few comments about my Montreal <laughs> comments on the uh, the chat, so sorry if there's any house fans out there. <laughs> All right, we'd like to thank everybody for joining us tonight. Uh, uh, this is the First time we've had a set up this way with the OPDL coordinators and the home and away venues with the OPDL. So we are looking forward to it. I think it may seem a little daunting at first. That seems like a lot that has to be done. But I think once you get going in it, you'll find out that it's actually a lot of fun. 
and uh, you'll get to see a lot of good soccer games and get to meet a lot of uh, great people over the course of the summer. So thanks again for joining us, and uh, we will be in touch with a little bit more information sent directly to you over the next week or so uh, regarding the forms that I said we would send out and making uh, some other arrangements with you. So best of luck to everybody, and uh, I'm sure we will be in touch. Thank you all. Have a good night.